In the last video, we were able to add a few things to our list of achievements and list of assumptions. So first we had the summability of some coefficient, this step size, times the gap between the function value at the iterate xn and the optimal function value. And this sum is um, finite. In particular, also the summons go to zero, but this is uh, a weaker property. And on the other hand, we had that um, the, the function value at some weighted average of the x uh, of our iterates xn. So at this weighted average here, where this capital gamma n is just the sum of the first n step lengths, and this weighted average uh, can be bounded by some constant term here, which only depends on um, the distance of the starting point and the solution, or any solution, by the way. So this holds for any x bar. Uh, and this um, sum of, uh, um, yeah, sum of um, gamma k squared norm of s k squared, and we know that this sum is finite. Okay, so um, this motivated us to, to assume that the, this uh, coefficient here goes to zero. Uh, so this means that the sum of gamma k should go to plus infinity, so that the gamma k's are not summable. Um, <clears throat> but the gamma k squared together with the norm of the subgradient squared is summable. And we will now use this uh, last assumption and our properties here, except for this inequality which we have now uh, used so much that there is no longer any use for it, um, in order, uh, so, so in order to prove the convergence of the iterates to um, some minimizer of f. Okay, so this also goes in four steps. Um, so the first goal is uh, to show that the lim inf of f of xn is the minimal value of f, so the f at this minimizer. Okay, and in order to prove the goal, uh, this time we just assume the contrary, so assume to the contrary that, and now we have, uh, we want to assume that, uh, yeah, since uh, we, we have, we, all, we always have greater or equal than, because f of xn is always greater than, greater or equal than f at the minimizer, of course. So greater or equal is guaranteed. So assume to the contrary that we don't have equal, so that we have greater here. So f of x bar is strictly less than the lim inf um, n to infinity f of x n. And by definition, this lim inf is the supremum over n greater or equal than zero, infimum k greater or equal than n f of xk. Right, so uh, we have that the supremum of these infima is greater than f of x bar. What does this mean? That uh, there is some um, n such that this infimum is, is above x bar, uh, so f of x bar. Okay, so uh, we continue here. So what we, what we know is that there exists some n0 greater or equal than 0. And just for the notation, I will also say that there exists some epsilon greater than 0, such that um, the infimum of k greater or equal than n0 f of xk is greater than 
f of x bar. And this means that uh, if the infimum is greater than something, this means that uh, all of the values are, um, are greater. Um, does it mean that we have supreme? Yeah, OK, yeah, it doesn't. So yeah, we can. Um, so we have greater here, so we also can, we, we can insert some epsilon here. Infimum still means that all of these values are greater than uh, f of x bar plus epsilon. So we have that there exists some n0 greater or equal than 0 and some epsilon greater than 0, such that for all k greater than n0, we have f of xk greater or equal, doesn't matter, uh, f of x bar plus epsilon. OK. So now we have used our assumption that this, that the goal, would, so that we want to prove, does not hold. Uh, what, we, what we are now going, going to use is the summability, sum over gamma n times this gap less than plus infinity, and our new assumption that the sum of the gamma k will be plus infinity. Uh, so first, let us uh, write down the assumption, uh, not the assumption, the summability, which we already know, which we have uh, shown in the last video. So we have plus infinity greater than, because I, I want to manipulate the sum here, so I, I write it in the opposite way so that I can uh, actually continue my inequality here. And I will change the summation index from n to k. So from sum from k to 0 to k, from 0 to infinity, gamma k, uh, f of x k minus f of x bar. And that's it. OK, so this is just this uh, summability here. OK. So we know that we have some, some n0, and we know something about all k is greater or equal than 0. So it seems, some, it seems a great idea to split up the sum. So sum from 0 to n0 minus 1. This is where we know nothing, but it's only a finite number of terms. So yeah, who cares? Um, gamma k f of x k minus f of x bar plus, and now we have the, the rest where we do care. So k from 0 to n0, um, gamma k f of x k minus f of x bar. OK, so this is just splitting up this sum into two sums. OK, and now we know this here. So we know for all k greater or equal than, uh, well, obviously that's wrong. So uh, we have split up the sum from 0 to infinity into two sums from 0 to n, n0 minus 1 and from n0 to infinity, obviously. That should be, should be correct now. OK, now it's right. OK, and now we know from, for, for, for all the k from n0 to infinity that f of xk is greater or equal than f of x bar plus epsilon. So this bracket here will be greater or equal than epsilon. So we have uh, this here. So we can continue this with greater or equal than. And we, have, we still have this finite sum we know nothing about. I mean, this is still this is actually greater or equal than 0. But OK, I don't care. Plus, and now, greater or equal than epsilon times sum k from n0 to infinity gamma k, so the epsilon is the common factor, 
and we know that the sum of the epsilon of the gamma k's is plus infinity, and it doesn't matter if we start at zero or n zero. Um, so this will be plus infinity, and this is our contradiction because we have assumed that this sum is finite, but we, we have actually uh, shown that if our goal doesn't hold, then the sum will be infinite. So the conclusion is that our goal must hold. Okay, so we have shown that this um, um, goal must be true. So we have shown that the lim inf of f of xn equals f of x bar. So we have shown that the smallest possible convergent subsequence um, of, these, of, these, of these function values here is f of x bar. Okay, and now we have all our tools. We are well equipped to, um, yeah, to show the, the, what I promised that um, xn converges to some minimizer. And don't blink because it's soon over. So the, the final battle against our enemy uh, is, not, is not long. Okay, so as I said, uh, the smallest convergent subsequence of f of xn is f of x uh, is f of x bar. So just take uh, subsequence, and now don't want to use the letter k because k appears often. So let's call it x n l l greater than equal than zero of xn such that. And now we want, as I said, the, the lim inf is the smallest possible uh, infimum of a uh, smallest possible limit of a subsequence. So we choose one of these subsequences such that the limit of L to infinity f of xn L equals f of x bar. Okay, so this is the first choice of a subsequence. The next choice of, this, of a subsequence, well, we know that um, the sequence xn is bounded. This is here in our list. So this xnl is a, is a subsequence and therefore it's also bounded. So take a, a, a well, if we, what we know about the, uh, about, uh, about bounded sequences is that they have a convergent subsequence. So take a convergent subsequence, and now we call it like x n l m. Uh, don't worry, that's our last subsequence, so there will not be any more indices. So of the bounded uh, bounded sequence x n l and set x hat just as the limit, so this is a convergent uh, sequence, so it has a limit. Um, and here we have m to infinity of x n l m. Okay. Okay. Great. So we have um, a subsequence of a subsequence, so a, a subsequence of this original sequence x n, so that the function values converge and the sequence itself converges. Great. What we now want to use is um, the, the fact that um, the limit of the norm of xn minus any minimizer x bar of f exists. So we have shown this by assuming that x bar is an arbitrary minimizer of f. So um, we know that for all, for all x bar, the limit of 
norm of x n minus x bar squared exists. So now we want to show that x hat is a minimizer so that the limit of x n l m minus x hat exists. And we know that uh, x n l m converges to x hat, so this limit is actually uh, zero. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we have, uh, that's very easy, uh, that's basically this thing here, lim, oh yeah, we have f of x hat equals, and now, well, f is continuous, um, because f is Lipschitz continuous on the interior of its domain, and since we only have real values, um, the, um, the interior of the domain is the whole space. So f is continuous. This is what we use here. So the limit of m to infinity and now uh, continuous means uh, that we can use that we can apply f uh, here and f here inside the limit okay so we have f of x sorry x n l m Okay, and x n l m, this is just a subsequence of x n l. So this is the limit, and now l to infinity of f of x n l, and this is f of x bar. So x hat is a minimizer of f. Great. So now we can we can use this property here, this existence of the limit um, of uh, to um, of x n minus x bar, uh, x n minus x hat, because x hat is a minimizer and therefore it can be inserted by x bar here. So um, we know that this thing exists. So there exists the limit of um, L to infinity norm of x n, uh, not L to infinity, m to infinity, of course. Um, well, let's, let's start, let, let's do it the other way. Let's start with n, sorry. So limit n, n to infinity x n minus x bar squared. So this is just this um, applied with x hat, with the minimizer x hat, instead of an arbitrary minimizer x bar. Okay, and now we have a subsequence, so this is the limit of um, subsequence x nlm, so this is the limit m to infinity x nlm minus x bar. And we have show we have we have we we have this here. So this shows that um, the limit of x n l m is x hat, and here I have to use x hat of course. And therefore this is zero. So what we have shown is that xn, the limit of, uh, of the distance of xn and x bar is zero, so xn converges to x bar as n goes to infinity. And now we have shown that x bar is a minimizer of f and we have shown that the sequence of our iterations xn converges to x bar. And this is um, basically everything we need to know. And the last video in the series about the subgradient method will just be a conclusion 
uh, where we formulate all these statements in a, in a proper way as a theorem.